anything anyway. Mike's Daily Podcast. FFF Show 2139, 2139. I'm Mike Matthews, your host, because the show is called Mike's Daily Podcast. I've been doing this show for, gosh, next year will be 10 years. And we're at FF Show 2139. Look at my ears. They are so, you can't see them because of this huge headphone thing on my head. And that's how we do your podcast. Get the headphones on as you listen to Mike Matthews singing. Mike's Daily Podcast. Uh, so last podcast picture, we had pumpkins and lobitos. That's Little Wolf. Mike's. That was last week. Daily. A week ago. Podcast. And there was lots of pumpkins. Yeah. And kids and parents all wearing masks. All having a good time, I think. I can't see the smiles. I don't know. I'm guessing. I'm guessing they're smiling through all of this. And then occasionally you get people that actually have like the cool print on the front of a smile or a mustache. (laughs) This one guy had a a smiling mustache face mask. And I was like, afterwards I said to my lovely lady friend, that was a good looking mustache. It's tough to grow mustaches. So maybe I'll do something like that. But yes, we're still wearing masks. We're still, it's, at this point, I don't even notice it anymore. I just figure nobody has mouths. We just have gotten so used to it. Oh, that person, uh, teeth. Now, I hear dentists. Dentists have got it hard because they don't have anybody showing up. Because people aren't worrying about their teeth anymore. Because you don't see the teeth anymore. Also, the coronavirus, they're worried about catching it at the dentist. But I went to the dentist back in June, I think. It may have been... No, it was late May. And they were very careful. They took a, you know, the temperature check with your forehead with the little laser beam. And then the rest of the time... And here's today's podcast picture. I wore a mask, sat down, and then everybody had those super masks on that looked like you're going to be welding something. That you're from the movie Flashdance. And you work hard for the money. Oh, no, wait. That was... uh, uh, What other one? Diary and Kara song. Yes, the... Words... What a feeling. That one. Yes, so... My point is, though, a year ago... We, my lovely lady friend, and the great... The late great Basil the Boxer... We were in Fairfax. And where was this particular area? Oh, yeah, Basil. No, it was it was a lot of fun. Yes. Oh, that's right. The Cowboy Creamery place. That's up there in... <laughs> I... I, for some reason, my, my... Usually your cell phone takes the has the mapping on it and I guess I was taking pictures with my old old Panasonic camera that just it it didn't doesn't have that hookup where the what do you the GPS. So at any rate it was up there. Point Lo Point Lobos now I can't remember. Well wherever the cowboy creamery is is where we were and we walked around. And I think a year ago I posted a cool picture of a bunch of gourds that were sitting in this um, cool little farm um, grocery store, direct from the farm to the grocery store type place. And let's see, Point Point Reyes, dang it, in Marin is where I was. So I'll feature a picture from that trip somewhere. I think with my lovely lady friend. But that was a fun trip. We really didn't get to go that far because all the power had been turned off. And we were at Point Reyes Station. And had gone through Nicasio and Fairfax. But we were we wanted to keep going, like to Inverness and all that, but it was the power was out, so which can be fun, which reminds us of our roots. How we were all Huddled in the darkness, scared, crying. Oh, wait, that was this morning. 
Yes. I've been having my uh, radio stations had some issues, but it's not the radio station's fault. It's a third party's fault. And that gets a little annoying because you have no control over it. Yeah. Just thought I'd share that. (laughs) Third parties that let you down. Not fun. And also, I've been thinking about when I go to Target or Target, as some of you call it, because you like the French words, uh, Target, whenever I walk into a Target, I always forget why I walked in there. What was I in there for? I get so depressed in Targets. It, it, the only thing is around this time of year, I walk over to the bin that has all their turkeys because they sell turkeys super cheap around Thanksgiving. And that makes me want to cook a turkey and invite a bunch of people over, which I never end up doing because I'm just so antisocial. But yes, I love walking into Target and having that amnesia. Target amnesia. I'd like to talk to you now about someone who was host, uh, producing a show. Uh, It was called Decoding DC, and I think that show, that podcast, has long since disappeared. And I found it. I forget how I found it. Oh, the host of the show used to be on NPR on the weekends, the All Things Considered, but it was only on Sunday afternoons. And she had this great voice and a great way of interviewing. I thought she was awesome. And so she started, she left NPR for some reason and started Decode DC. And I would listen to that. That was fascinating. You know, why why does Mitch McConnell act the way he does? Lindsey Graham, Nancy Pelosi, what's up with all of them? And she'd always mention her producer was Lena Masizzi. Yes, that, that sounds Greek to me. Well, I got to meet Lena at a podcast. Uh, it was like a podcast appreciation, podcaster appreciation party that Spreaker put on. You, remember, you know the Spreaker app? Do you ever use that? You can listen to the show on that, obviously. As we go outside a cafe anyway, where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley. And I reached out to someone at Spreaker. I think they had emailed me. And I saw that they're... they're Oh, yeah, because I had a question about something about uploading my podcast to their service. And they got back to me. They emailed me back. And I saw that the address was somewhere in San Francisco. And I go, as a joke, can I go and take a tour of your place? And the people that run Spreaker said, sure, come on over. So I went and I visited. They were very nice. I got to see they had like a little mini studio that they invited anybody to come in to do a podcast in. It was a soundproof studio, nice microphones. And they seemed very impressed. Wow, you really do a daily podcast? That's amazing. And I said, yeah, every single day. Right. Yeah, that's the ticket. And then they gave me a bunch of bumper stickers and a t-shirt. It was great. Then about half a year later, they sent me an email. We'd like you to come to our special um, podcast appreciation party. Podcasters appreciation party. And they had pizza there and beer. And I met a lot of people that were just getting into podcasting and then I met Lena Masizzi and I got a picture with her and posted it on my Facebook well I think that is the only picture I've ever posted on Facebook that's gotten like a zillion I forget it got way more likes and views than any picture I've ever posted and people were like uh, the the big fans and Lena's got a lot of fans were, were joking were laughing thinking Who's this guy? Well, Lena made it her um, profile picture on Facebook. Like, it was the first picture you saw when you went to her Facebook page. Well, she's gotten big on Twitter. She's very good with the very quick, often very profane-type tweets. She has an interest in the adult film industry and often posts a lot of observations about that. She's done a lot of stories for This American Life that kind of have to do with that subject. Anyway, I thought about her cafe anyway because I think it was this time of year. Wow, this was probably five or six years ago. So I think you will hear more from her in the years to come. And finally, I have a love-hate relationship with veterinarians. First off, I love you veterinarians for saving my dog, Basil, back when he had a, a massive gash on his paw. 
And there's nothing you can do. There ain't no home remedy to help that. You've got to take them in for stitches. And they were very cool. And I loved them for taking him in. We, we got there like right at five. But then, oh, they had this young lady working there. And I'm all distraught. And my dog, you know, is going having pain and everything. And she wanted to see my credit card like right away. That kind of thing. That's my hate relationship with veterinarians. The upselling with veterinarians. How they try to upsell you. That's just... That makes me never want to get a dog again. Or any pet. Because dealing with vets can be pretty... Yeah. And then the, the, the I found that VIP service. But there's really only one locally... That's worth anything in Danville. They got their own office inside of the uh, Pet Food Express, I think is what it is. And there you can actually talk to someone, but usually the VIP crews that show up at like a pet food place, any type of pet food store, they, they get you in and out so fast you feel like cattle. And your dog feels like a cow, which is interesting because your dog wants to chase a cow. So I just have, I could go on about this. I just really, and when I first got Basil, there was a really awesome vet in Castro Valley. She ended up leaving. A lot of people know who this vet is. Uh, I think her last name was Woolsey. And man, she was the nicest lady. And she said to me, when did you get this dog? I said, yesterday, talking about Basil. And she said, you've already bonded. This dog's already bonded with you. Because Basil was like pushing himself against me And she said this dog is in good hands So I guess what I'm saying is You have to really You have to ask around You have to get good Word Words uh, uh, Positive feedback People that are going to Promote this dog That have uh, You know what I'm trying to say my brain hasn't turned on fully yet, folks. That's why we're outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth. Look who's outside. Hello, my guys. It's a jelly, too hard to get stuff to everybody's there. Yeah, it's like October and everything. Yes, October. Are we selling pumpkins in the gift shop? No, my Matthew. They're disgusting. They, like, start to get all mushy and the flies buzz around them. Did you just say ooh? Ah. Ah. Okay. Wow, Shelly Shuhart can't say ooh for some reason. Look who else is here. Oh, Mike, this is Floyd the Floor Man. And this is John Deere, the engineer. Yes, Mike. It's good to get that very secondhand uh, positive, uh, what do you call it, assertion. I don't know what the word is either, Mike Matthews. Mm. Yeah, about vets. That's right. Because uh, I know there's good vets out there, but dang, I've met so many bad vets. Veterinarians, I mean, not veterans. You knew that, right? Okay, this got awkward. Next show, it's going to be the wonderful um, Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, and the brewmaster. Thank you for listening to FF episode 2139, 2139. And when you go home tonight, do what we do. Hug your family. Hold them close to you. (laughs) There's a radio broadcaster who who says that every show. But it's good advice. Go home and hug the ones you love. Be them furry. Be them actual loved ones. Be them relatives. Be they relatives. Be them they that. Grammarly challenged, grammar challenged people that can't talk on a Thursday. Thanks for listening. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at Mike's Daily Podcast.com. Email Mike now at Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.